So thank you for joining us today. Would you like to introduce yourself and tell us your role? Sure. Uh, I'm Andy Wilson. I'm the executive producer at Hangar 13, which is 2K's new studio up in Novato. And we're here to talk about Mafia 3. So do you want to give us a quick rundown about the game? Uh, sure. So Mafia 3 is the story of Lincoln Clay, a disenfranchised Vietnam veteran um, who returns from Vietnam and falls in with the black mob. Um, Lincoln's an orphan, so he's been looking for the semblance of family his entire life that he then finds uh, when, he, when he falls in with these guys. He, there's a paternal figure there and there's another guy who, who sort of treats him like a brother. Um, and the inciting incident in the game occurs when the Italian mob betrays the black mob uh, and everyone is, is wiped out apart from Lincoln so this triggers him to then wage war against the Italians try and take the city for himself build his own crime empire and push the Italian mob out of what is our version of New Orleans in 1968. Great. So you mentioned New Orleans in 1968 why that location and why that time period? Um, so we always look for interesting time periods and cities to set the Mafia games in. They're always very much of a time and place and an era. And when looking at uh, where we should set this in terms of time period, it, the 60s was very interesting because there were a lot of new competing interests emerging at that point uh, above the, the sort of traditional Italian mob. Um, so there was a lot of, of interest there from that point of view. It was also a time of great turbulence in the US and we decided that we wanted to have a multiracial character in our version of the, the Deep South in, in New Orleans. And so, you know, city-wise, it was an obvious choice because if we were going to go there and have, um, you know, that kind of narrative with that, that kind of time period, then we, we needed to have a very iconic city and New Orleans is just right up there as this instantly recognizable place. Excellent, and obviously set in the 60s, you've got quite a lot of uh, recognizable music. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, the music in the game is going to be awesome. I mean, this is such a great time period for us to be to be sort of pulling from. And uh, I think, you know, we're going to have a lot of classics in there. We're also hoping we can kind of do a bit of a Pulp Fiction and unearth a few forgotten classics that that we can bring back into the mix as well um, and then on top of that we've got our own orchestral soundtrack which you'll hear in much of the combat music um, and the general sort of environmental audio and that's very you know 60s southern uh, New Orleansy vibe to it as well. So he has three key lieutenants that work with him for him do you want to tell us a little about each of those and the differences and what they bring into the game? Uh, sure. So Lincoln's lieutenants are these three key characters. Um, he recruits them early on in the game because they're all kind of gangsters in their own right who are subservient to the, the mob structure within, uh, within the city. And they want their own bigger piece of the pie. So they see this as an opportunity to kind of take territory themselves. So it's a very uneasy alliance between these, between these characters. One of the characters we're talking about um, who in more detail here is Vito, Vito Scaletta, who is the protagonist from Mafia 2. So he's our kind of line, line uh, back to that game. Um, and we're going to find out more about his backstory, what happened to him in the intervening years, why he's ended up where he's ended up, that kind of thing. Um, but actually, the, you know, the, the, the lieutenants have um, gameplay and narrative purposes as well. So as you go through the game and you capture territory in the form of hideouts um, and whole districts, you'll actually assign them to your lieutenants. And by doing so, you'll start to create friction amongst this group. Um, and that friction will lead to very different narrative outcomes in the game. There'll be certain consequences and you'll have to manage that friction and decide, you know, whether you want to invest in certain characters or whether you don't care and you just want to, you know, get the best result for you as the player. There's also vehicles and driving. So do you want to tell us or give us a couple of examples and tell us how that works within the game? Um, so vehicles are a very big component of Mafia 3. Uh, we were very fortunate to have an engine uh, which we've um, brought over from Mafia 2 and rebuilt for the new gen consoles and new PC hardware. And a key component of that engine was the driving model, the physics underpinning all of that. Um, it's extremely sophisticated. The amount of things on the car that we can 
track and and balance is incredible like even you know having made racing games in the past it's it's even more so than that you know uh so the cars themselves um they're inspired by the sort of muscle car era uh, of of the 60s they're incredibly weighty meaty sort of fast vehicles you can drive them through the city at, at, at speed but they're also you know they handle like a dream as well so uh we have vehicle combat too so you can actually if you want uh, you know, if you get stuck in one of these systemic retaliation events that occur uh, as you start to cause trouble in the city, um, you can actually get into vehicle combat with them and target individual tires on the enemy car so that you can flip and spin them and, and get them off your tail. And it's open world game. How big is the open world and is it all explorable or is it only sections? Uh, the whole city is explorable. Um, the city's built of... A number of large districts we're not naming how uh, saying how many there are now we do have a very large uh bayou area at the south end of the city and there's going to be some different stuff happening there we've got boats in the game so they're going to obviously have a big part to play there um but yeah the the open world for us is definitely about density more than anything else so we want you to be able to walk around see interesting stuff to do all the time no matter where you are and for that those those open world activities to be connected to the main narrative so everything that you do is driving the main narrative forward in some way is helping you chip away at the mobs you know power base in any given district and is also helping to flesh out the other you know array of characters that we've got in the game and what did you guys use for inspiration uh, there's a variety of things depending on whoever you ask on the team you know the narrative guys have got their own you know, <laughs> their own wide range of things you know second half of goodfellas is probably a a reasonably good inspiration um there's a documentary cocaine cowboys which uh, is actually about miami and you know the drug the sort of uh, drug crime that erupted there in the 80s and that that was an inspiration for certain characters within the game um and then when it comes to the vehicles uh bullet and those sort of action movies from the late 60s is a huge influence, you know, capturing the feel and the spirit of those kind of things. So those are some of the influences. There are many, many more. And um, what would you say has probably been the biggest single challenge for you guys in developing Mafia 3? I know there's probably tons of challenges in developing an actual game anyway, but what's the one that sticks out most for you? Um, our structure is very unique and that's probably been our biggest challenge. Um, it's not just the fact that it's an open world game in which you can tackle any objective in pretty much any order whilst keeping a coherent narrative um, that feels seamless. It's the fact that the choices that you make are going to create problems with certain characters and that's going to take you down different narrative paths. So actually balancing all of that is incredibly tough. Um, we before we even entered production, got the entire creative team in a hotel uh, conference room for a couple of weeks and we thrashed through the logic of the entire thing so that we could be sure, you know, we had the story mapped out with the characters against all of the missions, the story-based narrative missions which form the backbone of the game and then the hideouts and the open world content as well uh, and made sure that it all worked and we got to a place where after a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of long nights we actually finally worked it all out and it, it all hangs together perfectly so it was a huge challenge but one that we actually dealt with weirdly quite early on excellent and obviously it was announced uh, about a week ago now that mafia 3 was coming people have been obviously calling out for a third game for a long time now what's the reaction been and how do you guys feel about that um the reaction uh <sighs> I've been doing endless presentations of the game, so it's really hard to say, actually. But uh, so far, the feedback all seems to be really amazing. Like, we've had so many people coming up to us at the end of the demos and saying how much they loved it. And, you know, we've got so much more to show and so many different nuances as well that it, it makes me feel really good. So for the first reveal, this is about the best experience I've had, I think. Uh, so if I'm judging it by that relative kind of set of reveals that I've been through in my career, then it's, a, it's probably the best. So why should people be excited for Mafia 3? Um, I think people should be excited for the game because it's something very different. You know, it's, it's this curated character piece. It's a real... Uh, narrative, a deep narrative, lots of well-rounded characters. We're going, you know, to be dealing with some interesting issues in the game as well because of the location and the time period. I think in terms of the location, we've got something completely unique. Um, and underpinning it all, we've just got a whole bunch of really great gameplay mechanics, a lot of stuff that we're going to reveal along the way. Um, and then finally, you know, the, the way in which you can steer the narrative, the way in which 
you can kind of tackle the game however you choose, but still, you know, get a unique experience as a player, I think is really, really interesting. So that's, the, for me, I'm personally excited when we finally get to show all of that in more detail. Um, so I think, um, I think it's really going to stand out. Excellent. And what's the current planned release date and on what formats? So we are releasing Mafia 3 on Xbox One, uh, PlayStation 4 and PC, and it's coming out in 2016. And I can't be any more specific than that right now. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much for your time today. We look forward to seeing more in the coming months. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Why not subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the link on the screen now?